Now, I'm sure you all know the old saying, you never know what you've got until it's gone. That's pretty much the sentiment I feel with every single FIFA before FIFA 17. Now, I know usually in these retro FIFAs, I come back, share some happy memories, the nostalgia is flowing through my veins, and I'm just feeling all kinds of happy. Well, for this video, it's going to be a slight difference. FIFA 17 was a bit of a weird one for me. Usually, there's positive vibes right now, but I'm just going to point out what happened in FIFA 17 and why I think it was the end of an era. We are revisiting FIFA 17 and yes, it is back. It is that time of the week, Retro FIFA. Let's get it. FIFA 17, now what a game. I mean, had Marco Royce on the cover. It broke Messi being the cover star and they returned back with Marco Royce. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Marco Royce. I love me a bit of Borussia Dortmund as well, but it just didn't feel right. We're used to seeing the elites on a FIFA cover. Messi, Wayne Rooney, Ronaldinho, those kinds of players that have that presence. And it just felt weird. I mean, it was community voted. Where the choice between Martial, Hazard, James Rodriguez, and Marco Royce was eventually the winner. And there's never been another EA community vote for the cover again. So I just think they don't trust the community anymore after that. I don't know. It was weird. Let me know down in the comments. But Marco Royce on a FIFA cover. I never envisioned it in my head. And right here, we have FIFA 17. Oh, geez. These menus bring back some memories and of course there are some FIFA 20 ads on FIFA 17 like I mean four years later and you're promoting FIFA 20. It was the first year for a lot of things and you might see right on your screen yes the first year where the journey was introduced. It was the first year for the Frostbite engine as well and it was a complete switch up from the Ignite engine. We're going to be exploring what FIFA 17 had to offer. We're going to go through the journey, career mode saves, ultimate team, a unique version of Alex Hunter is waiting for me. Do I really want to go in there and redeem it? I'm not too sure. We'll take a cheeky look at pro clubs as well. And of course, everyone's favorite segment, the soundtrack. Now, the reason why this was a bit of a weird one for me, FIFA 17, it came out in my final year of high school. So I had a lot of exams, a lot of assignments to do. Really didn't have too much time to play FIFA. So not really all too many memories around this game I can share. Probably one of the least played FIFAs in the franchise for me, just because it came out in that time of life. And then it was just a major switch up from FIFA 17. But this was the practice arena and they took away the stadiums as we covered in the FIFA 16 retro video and it was just like a normal generic EA stadium fit the yellow and black branding of FIFA 17. I had Ebra in the practice arena. I mean, who could have you had it? It was the year Ebra, Pogba, Mkhitaryan or join Manchester United. Jose Mourinho at the helm. I think this was the season that they switched up the penalty system so yeah, you could adjust your... Oh no, I did not want to do that. Okay, it's been a long time as you can tell but the penalty system got switched up, customized the way you wanted to hit the ball. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was terrible but you get the idea. Something that just triggers my OCD like why is like, the rest of the pitch so sunny and then once you get up to the goal it's all shadows like, like what's that about come on EA it actually tracks your score in that scoreboard up in the top left the small little details they put into this but it's just the lighting and the color grading that just put me off it's been a trademark segment when it's come to these videos it is the FIFA soundtrack for FIFA 17 it was going to be a tough task to match FIFA 16's vibes it was quite a record-breaking soundtrack this was the biggest soundtrack to date usually it spun around 30 to 35 songs and this just came out of nowhere 47 songs for the FIFA 17 soundtrack. They went for quantity over quality. Pretty sure I'd rather quality over quantity. I just wanted to include as many songs as possible. And that usually means there's some bangers, there's some stinkers, there's some songs that go off, and there's just some that miss the mark. Re-listening to the soundtrack again, there are some bangers as usual, but there are also some that just don't really fit FIFA and weren't it for me. You could really start to see they were, they were trying to mix it up. They were trying to expand the sound of the game. And that's fair enough. I think they did a pretty decent job with almost 50 songs in the game. It's it's gonna be impossible to get it all right. I think they hit the nail on the head with a few of them. Of course, I'm gonna go over some of my favorites. DJ BCHD is back on the case. Let me know down below, what were some of your favorites and some that you always just keep on going back to listening throughout the years? I definitely have a few. There was some Italian rap on there as well. Take it away. Here are some of my favorites from FIFA 17.
well, four years on, and you just can't go wrong with FIFA bangers. I'm sure I triggered some nostalgia, brought back some memories with those songs, and they'll just sometimes there's just too many to fit. I can't fit them all in, but I'd love to. Here we are. Let me go in. I've been doing this on the past few retro FIFAs. I want to check out my pro club's character, considering I didn't really play it all too much, and after I graduated, FIFA 18 basically came out. So let's see how much time I spent not studying. Okay, that was actually a lot more than I expected. 234 matches, 112 goals, and 83 assists. Decent output I've got there. 195 goal contributions in 234 matches. BCHD Jr. was on another level. He's 91 rated as well. F's in the chat. There's zero people playing pro clubs. It's sad to see. Now, I don't really want to know if I want to go into Ultimate Team. Let's just have a look. Oh, I'll just have a brief little look. In case any of you were wondering, yes, this was my squad back in FIFA 17. I actually... Okay, now that I think of it, I've played more than I expected. Mbappe up top, I don't even know what that card is, but back when he was called Mbappe Lotten, he was an OG back then, and I had Inform Depay and Inform Thorvan with a little French league on team. I didn't even play Ultimate Team that much, and this card still haunts me to this day. Jack Butland was like a prime Buffon in this game. He literally saved every single shot. Butland was an absolute tank on FIFA 17. What happened to the lad? Just a casual Div 6 player with a terrible record, it seems. And yeah, I remember that was a year... The Chapacoense incident. You had to rep the Brazilian squad on FIFA 17. It was such a tragic time. Now, I just want to cover probably the main feature of FIFA 17. Like, this was the flagship feature, the journey, which, I, to be honest, everyone hates it now, but I was pretty pumped for this when it came in. I thought it was going to be my player revamped, and you could actually experience what you could in the journey through my player, and it just never eventuated. This was a loading screen. Like, why was this? This looks so much cleaner, so much smoother than the original you know, the career mode club management little board you get before you select your team. This should be in career mode. Like, before you select a team, it shows location, manager, how many titles they've won in that nice league format. And they just never actually implemented that into career mode. I want to go over some features in the journey that I wish they implemented in my player and even career mode. And right here is definitely one of them. Now, you get me when I say there were some interesting concepts and ideas that were brought into the journey. I don't know why they thought we'd love it for three years and three iterations of FIFA. Nevertheless, like, why isn't this in career mode now? The social media hub, you can see your followers. 382k, I mean, we're just soaking in clout. 16 new mentions, we've got all the people in the DMs, we've got messages flying back and forth, even Harry Kane's tweeting about Alex Hunter. This was one of the many rare fun features about the journey, just scrolling through all these random tweets. We've got the league standings on the last day at Chelsea, we won the title, 75 points. Chelsea on 74, Arsenal on 74. Oh my goodness, that was like a five-horse title race. As you can see there, last day of the season, won the league at Chelsea, 3-0. Social media, I'll give you that. They also did, in FIFA 18, added customization with tattoos and clothing and all that stuff that should have been added into, you know, normal creator player, but no, it was just a journey-exclusive little customization feature. Definitely got old after the first save. Like, it wasn't replayable, didn't have any replay value. It couldn't go without some ultimate team integration. Like, come on. Our value at the end was £8.9 million on the transfer market, a plus 97% increase. We earned 792k. I definitely did go for a more of a fiery approach. I gained all that social media following, and the manager didn't really like us all too much. 36 goals in 18 assists in all those matches. The Premier League, the Championship, the FA Cup, the EFL Cup. Man, Alex Hunter was worldwide. And now we hop in straight to the career mode section. Let's see, I, I think this is when it got a bit of a change. Managers were introduced to the game. Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. All oh, these menus definitely do bring back some memories. Let's start up a brand new career mode save. We'll put on some of the perks, a 60% increase. And this is when total club management was introduced. I do remember this and it had this nice little overlay of what club you decide to join, all the board expectations and just a brief summary, which was a major step up from what they previously had in FIFA 16. Let's just go with United. This was probably my favorite season post Fergie era. And this is when they also introduced brand new managers into the game where you could select your avatar and it took them about three years is to say, hey, you know what? It would be good if you could customize these people for FIFA 20. I mean, I can't believe it. We got stuck with these imposters for years and years. Here in career mode, you can, you can just be these random people. Like, who are all these down here? Like, what, what is this? Nothing drastically changed from FIFA 16, to be fair, but there were some minor improvements, like your manager avatar. We had squad reports, squad ranking still in the game. We had injury list, kit numbers. Look at this team, man. How old is Rashford here? 18 years old. Rooney still playing at 30. We had Ander Herrera, Paul 
Pogba in the middle. Back when he had 94 potential, Martial was emerging onto the scene. We had Eric Bailey, Daly Blind as well. Valencia was still at the club. And we've got some old favourites like Fellaini and Ashley Young, of course. Jesse Lingard, the hot prospect at 23 years of age. Some faceless youth academy players. And this was the Jose Mourinho era. What a time to be alive. Now, quickly scoured throughout all my saves in this game. And this is by far the best of them all. I haven't accessed this in years, but I did have a Hoffenheim save. Now, let's take a look at the club right here. We've got Werner and Mbappe up top. Mbappe, he was only 19, still at an 89 rating. We had Demi Bay, Ceballos, Joshua Kimmich, Keita Balde, Rugani, Zuma at the back, Karsdorp, and Lafont in goal. We had a young Jolinton right here. Federico Chiesa. Okay, I'm surprised his picture hasn't changed for like three years in career mode. Nevertheless, we have a young Lautaro Martinez. It was my go-to save whenever I wanted a release from studying or exams or school. What kind of transfers were going on in FIFA 17 career mode? Now, let's go. Sort by most expensive. Thiago to Chelsea. Lacazette to Manchester United. Imagine. Anyway, Gerard De La Feu over to Bayern Munich. We also have Laporte moving to Real Madrid from Chelsea. So he would definitely didn't take that Manchester City route. Baptiste out to Borussia Dortmund. Edison moved to Manchester City. Uh, moved to uh, Crystal Palace. What am I even saying? Okay, that, that's a weird one. This is like an alternate reality. Uh, Sanabria from Real Betis to Atletico Madrid. That one makes sense. Zielinski to Spurs. We have Bormann to Fiorentina. Toby Alderweireld made a move to Real Madrid. Very interesting indeed. And Joel Matip from Liverpool to Spurs. Very interesting. Alan Halilovic, back when he was a wonder kid. The Croatian moving on to Roma. We have Pereira moving to Napoli. Forsberg, Benteke, off to Borussia Dortmund for 29 mil. Oh my god, I did do some business in this window. Rugani, Raul Jimenez before his Wolves days moved to Monaco for 18 mil. Pereira, before his Arsenal days, moved to Russia. Okay, very interesting career paths we're seeing evolve here. Ah, RIP, RIP. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. That's hit me hard. We'll move on from that. Emiliano Sala, you'll never be forgotten. Oh my god, look how young Milinkovic Savic looks there. Jeez, man. Reminiscent about these old players. I mean, remember Connor Chaplin? He was like the ultimate road to glory signing. Zakaria Bakali was still in here at Valencia. Renato Sanchez came off the best year of his life, the best year of his career. Pretty much the best player you could buy in this game. I probably don't have the fun for him. I definitely want to make a signing in this video. So you know what? We're going to go for Demi by plus like 10 million pounds. Let's just see. I just want to make a quick little signing before we jump into a game. And yes, just in case you were wondering, training was the exact same thing. I don't know why I've got this Youth Academy player doing all five drills, but yes, training, literally a carbon copy from when they introduced it in FIFA 16. Oof, look at this Youth Academy player I've got here. 16, 87 to 93 potential, already valued at 400k. Eric Kuhn, what a name. Remember the name, a future German hitman. Imagine we got an offer for Jolington from Newcastle. That would have been just written in the stars. Surprise, surprise, Bayern have accepted. Joshua Kimmich was definitely a baller back in this game. We'll go for 85k, we'll offer him a five-year contract, crucial first-team player. Let's get Ronaldo Sanchez on over to Hoffenheim. Finally, we can go ahead and accept the Portuguese Golden Boy. He won the Golden Boy Award in 2016. And it literally all went downhill since then. Welcome on over to Hoffenheim. Let's try and revive your career, Ronaldo. Gaming and school didn't really correlate together in 20, back in 2017. So I play this game in bite-sized chunks. It's a very on and off game for me. And that's why I don't really have the same sentimental feelings about it. Now for my first game of FIFA 17 in three whole years, we've saved a good one for you. We've got a Champions League match up against Spurs, round of 16. Well, we'll go in for round two. I can't leave it off without any goals. Second leg. And now, this is the last game, maybe? I don't know. We have to fact check this, but this is probably the last game that has White Hart Lane. Rocking the same lineups, rocking the same everything. We're just back out here. And let's hope we can win away in North London and even score a goal or two. Come on. We, we need to provide some quality content. Ross Bite Engine, definitely not my forte at the moment, boys. I'm trying out here. And he said, bye, us now, Mbappe. Will he be off to the races? And Werner over the top. It's all coming back to me now. Mbappe with the touch. Surely now we can finish. And Eric Dyer. He is just a man mountain. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Harry Kane's in the clear. And LaFont came out like a hero. And it will get past the defenders here. Let's cross it. Let's see if headers are possible. Mbappe tries to leap above. Oh, Werner, how's he done that? He's gotten past his defender. He's got Mbappe inside for the sweaty goal. Will we go for the sweaty? Ah, why? Why? Why me? Why can't we have nice things? As Renato Sanchez, he'll unleash a finesse shot. Renato Sanchez, it's forced a world-class save from Hugo in net. Timo Werner, now Timo Werner will cut it back. In on over Renato Sanchez. He sees a bit of space. And Renato Sanchez! Wh why can't we score? Why? Why? See, we have Renato Sanchez. 
Back in on over. Oh, that's a lovely offload. Surely now, Renato Sanchez. Surely. And finally, on the stroke of halftime, it is perfect timing. Oh, eight day scenes for the Hoffenheim fans that made the journey. And it's taken three halves of football, but we've done it. A beautiful little setup from Demi Bay. And if that didn't go in, I didn't. I could have played this game for another five hours and still wouldn't have scored. And Renato Sanchez, our signing gets on the score sheet. Thank God. 1-0 to Hoffenheim. And it's our first goal back on FIFA 17. Slide tackles felt so good in this game. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's naughty book territory. And LaFont's reflexes sets him apart from the rest. Here we go, Renato. Can we get the second away goal? Can we put this tie to bed? And Renato Sanchez, he can do it all. He runs the midfield. He can get past his defense. And now for the low driven, Lloris. Oh, how have we not gotten the end of that? Danny Ceballos. Now Mbappe. He's got options here, and he'll get past his defense beautifully, and Kylian Mbappe surely puts the tie to bed. We are in free-flowing scoring form, and it's a young teenage Mbappe back in these days. The FIFA 17, the generic face, was repping, and look at this, fake shot after fake shot. Spurs defense left in all kinds of trouble, and it was the cross-body shots that were really effective. OP in FIFA 17. It's all coming back to me now. I just need a few practice matches on the sticks to get into the rhythm of things again. Mbappe back in on over to Demi Bayer. We've got numbers forward here. Can Timo Werner get on the end of that? And no, it's another failed cross. But Keita Balde! Oh, Matip finds it through to Lamella. And now we're in trouble. Lafont, show us what you're made of. Lafont, literally. Oh my goodness gracious me. Some chaos unfolding in the box. Continue the run, Renato. Renato's on side. He's on side. The whole defense thought he was off. And we'll go for the low driven. It is killing Mbappe again. I thought Lautaro Martinez was in the mix, but now he knows that Hoffenheim have officially knocked out Spurs. It, it took us a while. We've taken the training wheels off, and Mbappe gets his double. Puts that icing on top of this cake. The cherry on top of this FIFA 17 gameplay portion. It took me a while. And killing Mbappe it was only the beginning of what was going to be a terrific career. Let's, yeah, let's try to catch Lloris off guard. Mbappe goes for it. Damn, that was close. Oof, these slide tackles, man. Bring them back. That was so fun. And finally, we get some solid FIFA 17 gameplay to show off. The Ignite Engine debut definitely had some positive and negatives, but it was a step forward and it was ahead of its time. Well, I think it's fair to say that FIFA 17 was very divisive. Many, many talking points. And it was a polarizing installment heading into this new era of Frostbite that still never seems to go away. Nevertheless, I did have my opinions on the game. Let me know down in the comments below. How'd you feel about FIFA 17? Is it one? your favorites is it really ranked low in the pecking order for me it is anyway nevertheless hopefully you did enjoy if you did make sure to drop it a like down below if you love these retro fifas subscribe hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any content coming to the channel i've been bchd stay safe have a great day and i'll catch you all in the very next video